safe to say that most of the couples here in the audience are married. And between my couples here, I'm assuming we would have developed a sort of shared understanding of who does what in the relationship. And more often than not, this becomes an unspoken recognition of a division of labor. Am I close? Gentlemen, you might be thinking about being your family's personal chauffeur. And ladies, what about those dirty dishes in the sink, separating the white from the colors? Well, today, I'm here to challenge these stereotypes. And the current, commonly agreed, might I say, politically correct plan for marriage is an equal sharing of chores and other duties. But this plan is not falling down any more than it has been throughout history. While we were exploring language and gender in an English history, we came across a I want one by Judy Burton. We like to call IB English D. And this was a piece that was just that, because it spoke about the unrealistic expectations that society had for women once they were married. Let me give you an example here. Quote, I want a wife who will keep my house clean. I want a wife who will keep my clothes clean. I rent, mend it, replace when you need me. And you get what you see. And for this reason, marriage scares me. A 17-year-old girl thinking about marriage is pretty absurd, right? According to my parents, all that should be going through my mind right now is school, school, and a little bit more school. But just like me, and now more than ever, we see more young women terrified of being outside And in a progressive society, where girls have access to education, and the tools they need to succeed, where they have higher employability rates and need to see, why are we still scared of marriage? Why do you feel like it might tie us down? Looking through a kaleidoscope, it is a pretty fancy view. But in layman's terms, it's simply another way of saying it all looks from the same lens, it all experiences from our perspective. And marriage is a little bit like that, so I instantly played the devil's advocate for looking at the situation. The way I saw it, Bernie's message wasn't confined to stereotypes of their wives, but husbands as well. And I'm 
clothes, you make new shoes, and chin, and chin, and chin, and you name it. And you have to listen to everything I say when you look around those rooms. You just always have to be wrong. Ain't that fun? Happy wife, happy life, happy wife, happy life. Isn't that what they all say? And I'm driving around to all my friends and parties showing just how wonderful of a husband he is. How much he adores and cares for me, pampers me endlessly. And then having stumbled home at some ball for taking an hour of the night, I was being dead silent. I get to stay at home all day, not just all that extra sleep and all that me time. We'd come home late, we wouldn't even ask each other how our days went. The mic would have been for us, we don't watch my TV, we would go to bed, and on that point, I would need at least 87.3% of the space on that bed measured. No way would my precious limbs be subject to that squished cramp. Thank mm -hmm. you. 